ready. Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Let's go ahead and talk about this lady. Her name is Nikki. Now, I remember her song from back in the day. She did a song with the Migos. I think it was called like Bad Intentions or something. And um, Kanye West was like really promoting her like back around like 2015. And um, her name is Nikki Heaton. And so a lot of people didn't really know what happened to her. Well, the lady who was suing uh, Kanye West, the Laura, forget her name, Laura somebody, the one who's suing Kanye West for, you know, essay and harassment and stuff like that. Her and Laura are best friends. And so she was named in the lawsuit. And so she decided to speak out and tell her story on um, TikTok about what she went through with Diddy and Kanye. So let me go ahead and share my screen really quick here. Give me just a moment to pull this up here. Okay, so that's Nikki right there. And so, um, basically, she was saying that she had arrived at the studio with Diddy and Ye, and they both kind of cornered her, started ripping off her top. They were trying to take off her pants. And so it was a really scary situation. Now, she talked for like a good 30 minutes. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I kind of felt like it was kind of long-winded, um, you know, so I, I went and I, I cut it down to about 10 minutes. So we're going to watch it. It's kind of long, but I want you guys to get the full context of what she's saying about how, you know, they, they basically laced their drinks. Her manager, who's usually, you know, beside her, who's usually quiet when she got the drink in her, she started talking and becoming more aggressive. And so it, it's basically painting a picture for things and what happens in the industry to a lot of young women who are not protected. And she also made it a point to state that what was the scariest part is that there were men there. One of them was Kanye West's cousin. Another one was like um, an executive and she looked to them for help and literally none of them did anything. They just like, you know, started texting, they looked away. So that's when she realized she was in this by herself. So we're gonna go ahead and um, watch this really quick here. Like I said, it's kind of long, but I narrowed it down to the most important parts. And they've been taking it down, too. So that's another thing. That's why I downloaded it. Because initially when she um, put it out there, it was taken down within a few hours. So a lot of people are saying that that might be Kanye's team that are taking down um, you know, her stream. So I don't know. But I do have her full stream. But like I said, I'm just going to play 10 minutes. So... Give me just a second here. She had also posted some um, tweets on Twitter too, so, or on Instagram. All right. So one of the posts that she made, she said, if you saw my live, I hope you learned something from it. Thank you for the flood of sweet messages. Don't worry about me, I'm good. Like I said, I'm one of the lucky ones. I'm just trying to raise my boys to grow up to be heroes because we sure as fuck don't need any more villains. And then she also said, hold on. Uh, so proud of you, LP. And that's the Lauren lady. Remember when you guys asked me before why I said the industry was evil and why I left? I think I'm finally ready to tell one of my stories. So we're going to go ahead and watch this here. And uh, we get a call and it's like, hey, like, yeah, he wants you to come to the studio. And we're like, cool, like, why? And he's like, he wants to work on music. And we're like, that's great. And so we go and it's like somewhere in LA, some studio we've never been to before. And we show up and walk in <clears throat> and, you know, a couple of people that, that we know, men, um, you know, an executive that worked with Kanye, Kanye's engineer and um, Kanye's cousin. And we walk in and we're like, okay, cool. Um, and it's, immediately I was like, there's something not right 
we were invited, like I was invited as my as an artist and my manager. So I'm wearing like fucking double XL sweatpants and like a giant hoodie. I look like a fucking slob. And like, you know, my manager's there in her usual suit, like black leggings, black zip up. Like we're just like, ah, oh, this is strange, but okay. Um, and we walk in and there's all these ladies there wearing their um, club gear and Kanye and Diddy are already like out of their fucking mind. Just like completely fucked up. Um, drunk but probably something else uh and we're like okay but like we were invited as artists like maybe these girls are gonna leave and we're gonna work on music like shh, let's just let's just walk in and just yeah immediately i felt like there was something weird um because you know there's always drinks there's always you know the the vodka and the mixer is just like sitting on the table but we walk in and immediately and Diddy hands me a drink, Kanye hands Lauren a drink, and we're like, that's weird, <laughs> why are they serving us? Um, and I don't like to drink, uh, like I don't like alcohol, I don't like the way that it like makes me feel, it makes me feel sick, so, but um, my manager since the beginning, she was just like, I know you don't like to drink, but if someone famous um, hands you something to drink, even if you don't want it, just like hold it and like pretend, because you don't want to seem rude, and I was like, okay, and it was like a vodka cranberry, and I was like, oh. Gross. My manager was sitting across on this couch with um, Kanye's cousin and then the other girls were sitting next to her. And immediately I was like, there's something fucking wrong. Like I couldn't explain it. I didn't, I didn't know what to do. Um, but I just like felt that there was, there was something not right. And I see her across the room holding her drink. And it was weird because um, I noticed as I was standing there, just kind of just like wondering what's going on, um, Diddy kept looking at me and Kanye kept looking at Laura and like they were exchanging glances and I'm like, they're like watching me strangely. And I'm like, okay, let me pretend to drink. And like, I'm not actually doing it. Um, and like that seemed to like make them happy, like me like pretending to like to join in. And immediately I'm like, there's something flushing in this drink. There's something, there's something in this drink. Um, and I didn't know what to do. Uh, and I, like, my manager was like across the room, but like close enough, but like not next to me. So I couldn't like whisper to her, but I wanted to tell her, I'm like, Hey, don't, don't fucking drink this. There's something wrong with this, but I couldn't. So I reach for my phone and I start to type and Kanye takes the phone out of my hand and he's like, who are you texting? Like, you don't need to text anyone. Like we're having a party. And I was like, okay. And he like puts it on one of the speakers and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> Now what do I do? Um, like, I, I don't I don't know what to do. And I see my manager take a sip and I'm like, fuck, I, what, what, do I, what do I do? Two sips and I watch her face flush. And all of a sudden, like I look over and she's speaking really loud and like making jokes. And I'm like, whoa, like this isn't her. Like she doesn't make jokes. She's fucking terrified of people. Like she doesn't even talk. And I was like, it's already, it's already hitting her. Like a hundred percent. I just knew that the drinks were all laced with something. Um, and she starts like almost being like belligerent a little bit, but not in like a crazy way, just like really enjoying herself. And I'm like, that's not her. That's not her. She doesn't even want to be here. Like, this is weird. And all of a sudden she like dismisses the studio hose. She's like, she's like, you can leave, you can leave. And I'm like, oh my God. Like what's going on? And the girls file out. They go to like a different, a, a different studio, or they go somewhere. And um, I'm like, I have to do something. I, I have to do something. What do I do? And I go and I go to get my phone where Kanye put it on one of the speakers. And as I'm going to get it, I turn and my manager's walking out. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like where, like where, where, where are you going? Um, I'm already seeing people being like, this is Cap. What do I have to gain? Let me just ask you, what do I have to gain? I'm in a fucking farm in the middle of nowhere. I'm not in the industry anymore. I'm not filing a lawsuit, so I'm not getting paid. I'm not looking for clout because who gives a fuck about me? So how, why would I lie about this? This has been nine and a half years since this happened to me. Why would I, let me go on. I don't, oh, whatever. Um, yeah, so I see her start to leave. And I'm like, Ooh, like, where, where are you going? And she's like, it's fine. I'm just going to the bathroom. And I was like, no, 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 stay, 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 stay. And she's like, it's right there. I'm just going to go to the bathroom. And I was like, okay. And she walks out. And all of a sudden I realize that I'm in this studio. The music's low, the lights are dim, but you can still like see everything. 
And um, I realize that I'm in the studio with Diddy and Kanye, and they're both off their shit. And there's three other men, an executive that works with Kanye, his engineer, and his cousin, and me, alone. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Okay. <laughs> they're like fucked out of their minds. And they start coming towards me, and they're like, hmm, don't you want to take your clothes off? Like, it's so hot in here. And I'm like, no, fine. It's, I'm fine like this. And they're like, come on. Like, it's just us. Like, we're all just friends. Like, let us just, like, see, like, how you look. And I'm like, okay, I'm fine. And like, I still haven't gotten scared yet. You know, like I'm still like, this is a bad situation. I'm creeped out, but like, there's no reason to panic. There's other men here. So they're coming towards me and I'm like, okay, this is fucked. I don't know where my manager is. I don't know where anyone is. And they're coming towards me more and they're trying to like take my clothes off. And I'm, I'm, I'm like at that point where I'm like, this, this is not good, but I'm like still trying to like play it off. Just like, stop, you guys are fucking stupid. Like, get out of here, like don't touch me. I start to get a little bit apprehensive because I'm pretty much like backed up against the wall. Like there's only one exit and I'm pressed up against this door. And I'm still not completely terrified yet, but uh, I'm like, you guys stop, like stop, stop. And they're getting to the point where they have like ripped my shirt off and um, like, I'm like almost fully exposed at this point and they're both coming at me and I'm like, you guys, like seriously, this isn't, this isn't funny anymore. And I look to my left where his executive is. Like we know him pretty well. Like I, we've been around him a lot. He's literally three feet away from me. Like if I reached and he reached too, like we could touch, like he's that close. And I look and I'm like, hey, like I give that look where I'm just like, come on, like step in, like this isn't cool. Like you're a grown man, like you're like 50 years old. I know you have a family, like you know this isn't right, like do something. And this is the part that for as long as I live, I will never fucking forget. It isn't actually the aspect of being sexually assaulted. That's not what haunts me. I look over to this man asking for help and I literally mouth the word help and we lock eyes. And he looks away. I'm like, okay, there's still two more men in the room. And I look to his engineer next, who's sitting right, right next to him. And I know that he's married and he has, he just had a little baby girl. And I'm like, okay, he's gonna do something. Um, and I look at him next and I'm like, okay, like do something, say something, do, do anything. And he, he looks down at his phone and starts texting. And then I was like, oh, fuck. Um, I look at Kanye's cousin next. And I'm like, do something, you know, like fucking do something. And he spins his chair around. And that's when that like gut wrenching fear set in. And I was like, oh shit, <laughs> no one's fucking saving me tonight. No one's gonna do anything. No one's gonna do fucking anything. And that's when I was truly fucking scared. Um, at this point they had ripped, they had ripped my, my shirt off and they were trying to get my pants off. And I realized that I was completely alone. And um, I closed my eyes for a second Clear as day, I heard this in my head, and it didn't make any sense. I heard, go towards them. And I was like, oh, fucking great. The one time I asked God for help, Satan answers, because why, why the fuck would I go towards these two predators who are sexually assaulting me? Like, why would I do that? And then all of a sudden it clicked. My back was up against the glass wall. I could not go any further back. That was the only exit. He said, go towards them. They were already drunk off their shit. They were fucked up. So I lunged forward. I stepped forward and it like threw them off balance. Like they were like, oh, you know, and like they stepped back at least a foot and a half. And the moment that they did, I reached behind my back. I pulled the door and I slipped out grabbing my clothes. And I ran across the hall, across this corridor and I hid inside of an empty studio that was black. 
Um, and I sat there for like 20, 25 minutes, just like crying, like, what the fuck do I do? And I'm texting my manager and she's not answering. Um, and eventually, I don't think I'm supposed to say this next part because it could hurt her case, but basically, everything she fucking said is true, basically. Because what I saw next, I fucking saw it. I was the only one who wasn't drugged. I was the only one who didn't drink their drinks, whatever it is. I was the only one. Um, so I saw what happened next and what, who was involved. Um, and that's why I'm a part of this lawsuit and like named in it. Uh, and yeah, it just, that, I mean, I, I eventually I got us both out and I got us an Uber and, um, she obviously didn't remember anything because she was drugged and I wasn't. And a part of the, apart from the aspect of, you know, looking for help and they turned away, the only other thing that really, really fucks with me is what about all those other girls that were there? Those nine other girls who were drinking the drinks before we even got there. Like, I know none of them got out. I know none of them got saved that night. And I'm like, do they even fucking remember? Do they even know what happened to them? <sighs> if you have daughters, make sure to tell them that they're idols they should never meet and should never fucking go to the studio with anyone, even if you're invited there as an artist, unless you have a bodyguard with you. But I guess the point is that, I mean, the same shit happened with, with Cassie. As soon as she said what happened, no one believed her and they gave her so much shit. And it wasn't until videos came out and more people stepped forward that people were like, oh, she was telling the truth. And I'm just, I'm here to warn you guys that more people are gonna come forward. So believe her when she's talking right now. God, strike me down right now if I'm lying. So, I don't know if that resonated with any of you or um, was a good idea to tell that story, but um, yeah, women support women, support the truth. All right, let me come back on the screen. Okay, I know that's a lot to unpack. <laughs> There's a lot of debate going on in the chat. I'm trying to read. I was reading the comments. A lot of people are kind of turned off by her outfit because she's talking in a bra. She got these big old boobs. Again, am I one to talk? Sorry. You know what I'm saying? That's just how the dress is cut. But, um, you know, I think her outfit aside, you know, her boobs, her big breast aside, that doesn't mean that she's necessarily lying or not being truthful or that she wanted it or, you know, People are asking, is she an OnlyFans model? You know, I, I don't know. I just know her to be a singer. Maybe she does OnlyFans now. I'm not sure. But um, I don't think, you know, like I said, for me, I'm definitely going to watch this play out in court. But I don't think she really has anything to lie about. She's not the one suing. She's basically confirming a lot of this stuff in the suit against Kanye West. Because if you guys don't know, more information has come out with Kanye West's behavior. I believe it was the New York Times. Let me see. Or page six. I mean, the stuff that's coming out about Ye is just really, really disturbing. Okay, this was just on the 12th. More info came out about him having like three hour sex sessions using Viagra. Let me share my screen real quick here. Okay, so this is what they're saying here. Um, Yeezy does it, bombshell. Kanye West lawsuit says rapper took Viagra for three hour sex sessions with A-list star at first hearing is confirmed. So this is moving along into court. Remember last week uh, he was trying to do a counter suit, but it looks like the judge um, is moving forward with this case. I believe she's the one who's with Wigdor the same um, company, the same law company that uh, Cassie used to sue Diddy. I believe she's the one, if I'm not mistaken. But um, let me see if I can find what else they're stating here. Okay, here goes one of the texts that they're saying here. The rapper known as Jay allegedly sent the following text to Lauren. 
One time I took Viagra and fucked an A-list celebrity for three hours. Not sure why that thought came to me. Another offensive tweet allegedly read, just thinking about, just thinking back to the bowling alley, thinking of what the headlines could have been. Ye arrested for fucking the shit out of his assistant on a bowling alley floor. Okay, child. Um, so there, let me see if there was another uh, tweet they had, not tweet, text they had from him. Okay, so here they're also saying, during a studio session, a male and female guest arrived, Kanye West, a.k.a. Ye, asked the male guest if he would allow him, Kanye West, a.k.a. Ye, to have sex with the female guest. Ye told the male guest that in exchange for allowing him to have sex with the woman, the male guest could have sex with the plaintiff. So that's part of the orgy situation they were talking about last week. Um, they're also saying in an effort to pursue his male guest to sleep with Lauren, he was saying that Lauren had some great coochie. I mean, this is just insane. You know, again, I'm not putting anything past anybody at this point in time. You know, a lot of people thought that because Harvey Weinstein was this great, you know, producer and he made these cool movies and look at all the women who came out against him. I think basically hip hop is having their own Me Too movement at this point in time. And I see nothing wrong with that because, again, a lot of people have been affected, have been assaulted, have gone through a lot of things, and now they feel comfortable enough to speak. And you have a lot of these people who are gatekeepers for so long because you have a, the, you have a majority of the population who looks at a lot of these rappers and entertainers almost like gods. You know, they look at them like gods that they can do no wrong. And so because of that, that power ends up going to some people's heads. You know, and sometimes when you have so much power and money and prestige, a lot of these men, they get bored. They become deviants. And they know because they hold a lot of power and prestige, they can have people do things that they normally wouldn't do because of that power. You know what I'm saying? Just like if it's a, the average guy, nine times out of 10, the average guy that you just met on the first date cannot call you at two o'clock in the morning and be like, oh, come to my hotel room so we can go over a script or so we can kick it. Most likely you're not gonna go because he's the average Joe. You don't know him like that. But when Harvey Weinstein, who is somebody powerful in the industry and you wanna be an actress, calls you and says, come to his hotel room, you know, I need to talk to you about something. Because of his power, because of his money, because of his fame, a lot of women will throw common sense out the window. And that's no different than what's going on here in the industry where, you know, if it was just like, you know, a regular rapper, you might bring your boyfriend or your, you know, your homegirls, you might bring people from your own team. So that way you feel safe in the studio with this guy that you may not know. But if it's Diddy or Kanye, you know, you're not thinking they're going to do anything nefarious because you see them on television and, you know, Kanye seems so cool. Diddy seems so cool. So you end up going by yourself, and these are some of the things that happen. You know, so the whole situation is unfortunate. Um, I don't think she really has anything to lie about, because at this point, I, I don't put anything past anybody. At the end of the day, you never really know people. You never really know what they do behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? Like I always say, everything that glitters is not gold. And we need to stop taking sexual assault lightly. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely tea TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely tea TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.